Are you dealing with a dry scalp? You're gonna to wanna to watch this video. We're gonna be talking about how to treat a dry scalp. Now, there are a lot of primary skin conditions that lead to patches of flakes, irritation, redness, and overall, leave the scalp quite dry. These include psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis, atopic dermatitis, contact dermatitis. For today's video, we're not gonna talk about those conditions. We're just gonna talk about habits, exposures, things that you can switch up that can help improve a dry scalp. Now, if you weren't aware, your scalp has a high density of sebaceous oil glands. You have a ton of hair follicles there, you have a ton of oil glands. And some people genetically, and as it relates to their hormones, make more oil. It's called sebum. And they may have an oilier scalp, they may have oilier hair. But one common misconception is that oiliness equals moisturized. You can be super duper oily and your skin barrier can be impaired. You can be losing water. The oil is not the most all encompassing moisturizer. It helps to a certain extent, but it does not prevent you from having dryness, whether it be on the scalp where you have a ton of oil glands or elsewhere on your body. And it can really be a struggle actually for people who do have an oily scalp because they find that their scalp can get dry, but then their hair looks oily and greasy. So what do you do? How do you modify your life? And how can you go about changing things so that you don't have a dry, irritated scalp? All right, first of all is take a look at your water that you are bathing with. Hard water can be a culprit for dry skin anywhere on the body, including the scalp. Hard water basically has a high concentration of minerals, and what happens is these interact with the surfactants in your shampoos and your cleansers and can leave a film on the skin that disrupts the skin barrier and leads to more water loss. You can go about getting a water softener. If you have your own home or whatever, this is something you might actually pursue going all in on. It can be very expensive to invest in. Now they do sell things that you can put on your shower head that soften the water just there, so that's an option. To what extent though that really changes the game for you is hard to predict. So whether or not you and invest in that and it makes a huge difference, I actually can't predict. One would assume it would make a difference. A lot of people report that it does, but truthfully, the literature we have on water softeners kind of suggests, yeah, sometimes it might help, but other times eh, it doesn't really make a difference. So inconclusive. So I don't want to get on here and tell you, yes, buy a water softener. It will get rid of your dry scalp. Keep your showers short. That will actually minimize the impact of hard water on your skin quite a bit, including your scalp. The longer you're in there, the more hard water your skin is exposed to. And when you're in the shower, maybe try and not get your head wet until the last possible minute when you're going to shampoo your hair. Just keep it out of the water. Speaking of shower, let's talk about things, regardless of the hardness of your water, that you can tweak around in your routine that can really impact the dryness of your scalp. The first thing we've already kind of touch, touched on, keep the shower short. The longer you're in there, the more the water is going to dry out your skin. Furthermore, make sure that you are bathing in lukewarm to cool water, which actually is quite miserable, to be frank. Uh, and I recommend that, but I don't do it myself. And I know in the majority of cases for patients, it's just not doable to bathe in lukewarm to cool water, especially in the winter, it's quite miserable. But when you're shampooing your scalp and rinsing out the shampoo, try and lower the water temperature. Um, that way you're not getting a lot of hot water on the scalp that will dry out your scalp even further. Speaking of shampoo, this, this is a really important part of things. So make sure that you're not using too much shampoo. You would be surprised. There is a good chance you are using way too much shampoo. Now, a lot of people will say, should I stop shampooing my hair or, or go the no poo method to correct my dry scalp? I wouldn't recommend that because that can lead to a buildup that actually can aggravate dryness and irritation. You do wanna be cleansing your scalp on a regular basis. And the frequency with which you do that and, and the shampoo you choose is going to boil down to your hair type and what your hair type tolerates. At least shampoo the scalp once a week for scalp health. That's super important. Make sure you're not using too much. What happens is people, and, and it's not your fault, trust me, um, the shampoo bottles encourage this behavior because they, you know, the depending on the bottle, they oftentimes will just spill out into your palm very generously and you end up using too much. You really only need roughly the equivalent of like a nickel to dime sized amount to shampoo your scalp. That's really all it takes. Now what you want to do is 
work that into a lather and get all surfaces of your scalp. This is especially important for those of you who have oily hair and oily scalp. You wanna make sure that you're getting that lather all over the scalp, not just here and here, but all over. Spend a good at least 30 seconds lathering to all surfaces of the scalp. And you, you really don't need much. That, that's all you need to cover the entire scalp. You know, for me personally, I purchased an inexpensive shampoo brush last year, and it's really helped me in cutting down on how much shampoo I use because it really allows me to easily distribute that shampoo lather all over the scalp. You certainly don't need that, but it helps. It's, a, it's been a helpful tool for me personally. Um, once you do that, make sure you rinse it out in total. This is why using just the, the bare minimum amount to get a good lather all over the scalp is important because if you use too much, it becomes actually a lot more difficult to rinse the shampoo out in total and you can leave behind shampoo residue on the scalp, which is very drying and very irritating. And if you have hard water, that residue of shampoo mixed with the hard water, that's gonna to contribute to that film that dries out the scalp. It can be very irritating and cause itch, cause you to scratch, further impair the skin barrier in your scalp, create a vicious cycle. So the key is don't use too much and make sure you rinse it out in total. After you rinse it out, people are gonna use a conditioner. The whole point of using conditioner on the hair is to counteract the impact of shampoo on the hair strands. It disrupts the char, shampooing disrupts the charge on your hair and that can lead to static and tangles and poor manageability. So the point of conditioner is not really to moisturize, but basically to coat the strands of the hair and neutralize that charge so that the hair is more manageable. Conditioner also helps improve the elasticity of the hair and may have ingredients in it that kind of temporarily mend split ends and improve their appearance. Now, when you apply conditioner, you're going to put it to the middle of your hair all the way down to the ends. Leave it in for a few minutes per the instructions and then rinse it out. For the most part, you're not gonna be putting conditioner up here. It's not really designed to moisturize your scalp, and if anything, it can make your roots look very greasy and can weigh them down. So it's not a product that you're going to lean into, per se, if you have a dry scalp. The shampoo industry is far more confusing in terms of the marketing of the products compared to skincare. Skincare products are often marketed, you know, towards dry, oily, combination skin, different skin types, and I have a video all about that as a side note and, you know, the limitations of that. Take a look at your shampoo that you're using, though. It could actually be contributing to the dry scalp primarily if you are not rinsing it out. But there are shampoos that are harsher. They are intended to really get in there and break up the film of oil plus product residue. They're, they're a lot stronger in their detergent action, and that can be very drying on the scalp. Specifically, shampoos that are marketed as clarifying shampoos. These are very valuable in your hair care routine if you use a lot of styling products because they really get in there and break up that product residue on the scalp, on the hair strands. But clarifying shampoos are really only meant to be used at most twice a week, really only once a week, honestly. So if you are accidentally using a clarifying shampoo and you're using it on a daily basis, that could be drying out your scalp, especially if you are not rinsing it out all the way, you're using too much of it. Um, so look, look out for the term clarifying on your shampoo and, and be aware that that could be one that would dry out your scalp. So you might think, well, I have a dry scalp, maybe I'll choose a product labeled as a moisturizing shampoo. Moisturizing shampoos, they're formulated not really to moisturize your scalp per se, but rather to cut down on flyaways of the hair strands. And sometimes they have ingredients in them that kind of glue together the split ends so that they are smoothed down and are less you know, apparent. Moisturizing shampoos are also formulated to cut down on static. They aren't really intended to moisturize your scalp, but they do often have a milder surfactant in them, so they may be a little bit better, gentler to your scalp. Then you have revitalizing or replenishing shampoos. These oftentimes are intended for people who have 
damaged hair uh, related to maybe color treatment or some sort of chemical processing. They're not meant to revitalize your scalp in terms of dry scalp or moisture balance. Similar to the moisturizing shampoos, they may contain ingredients that temporarily improve the appearance of split ends, you know, things that kind of glue them together. Revitalizing and or replenishing shampoos, they may also contain ingredients that are intended to make the color last longer. Then you have volumizing shampoos that are intended to build body in the hair. And basically these have proteins in them that will stick onto the hair strands and make them appear thicker, more voluminous. And then you also have baby shampoo. Now baby shampoo, is um, not really formulated to really get in there and robustly cleanse the scalp of sebum and product residue. Because babies, they don't really use a lot of styling products and their oil glands are inactive um, for the most part. Uh, and so baby shampoos are very, very mild. But if you have a dry scalp and you especially don't use a lot of styling products, you may find that a baby shampoo is a good option for you. Those are some general categories of shampoos. So take a look at whatever shampoo it is that you are using. Maybe consider switching to a different one or using the one that you have maybe a little less frequently. Don't look to your shampoo or your conditioner to moisturize your scalp. Instead, reassess your shampooing habits, your showering habits, and hopefully these tips that I've given you up until this point, you can implement some of them and see if that makes a difference, rather than going out and buying all that new shampoo. Unless, of course, you are overusing a clarifying shampoo, then I would definitely suggest backing down on that. For those of you out there though that have oil, an oily scalp and dryness, your hair gets oily, appears very limp if you don't shampoo frequently, be mindful that when you do take that nickel to dime sized quantity of shampoo, you don't need more, um, make sure you are getting all surfaces of the scalp. What I find a lot can happen to a lot of people who have oily hair is you know, you're in a hurry, whatever, and maybe you don't get the lather all over your scalp. So you kind of have patches where you really haven't shampooed so well. Um, and then you have other patches maybe in your scalp where you've shampooed too much, you've put too much of the volume, too much of the shampoo volume there, and it's left a residue behind. So you can kind of get patches that are dry and also oily and limp. So just be really mindful that you are putting the shampoo to the entire scalp, you're not using too much and you're rinsing it all out. Sounds straightforward, but you would be surprised a lot of people do end up using way too much shampoo and leaving that residue behind. Let's move away from shampoo and conditioner and focus on heat styling. Uh, if you use a blow dryer, that actually can dry out your scalp quite a bit, especially if you use a very high setting and you hold it too close to the scalp or you don't move it around very frequently. So I recommend making sure that when you use your blow dryer, you use it on a, a lower heat setting, keep it at least 15 centimeters away from your scalp and make sure you're moving it around continuously. Um, you don't have to abandon heat styling, but maybe consider bagging down on the frequency and using a lower setting. I recommend using a microfiber towel though before you go about drying your hair because I find that the microfiber hair towels, they absorb a lot of the water out of the hair very quickly so that it cuts down on dry time for using a, a blow dryer. So use that first, use a microfiber towel first. You'll find that it cuts down on the amount of time you have to use the blow dryer. Let's talk about moisturizing the scalp. A lot of people will ask me, can I use my facial moisturizer on my scalp, it's very dry. You wanna be careful using skincare products on your scalp because they can leave a damaging residue on the strands that make them tangle and very frizzy and it really can make your hair a nightmare to deal with, frankly. That being said, if you're bald, then yeah, absolutely, you can use facial care products to, to your scalp. It's, it's really, you know, the hair that becomes a challenge with, with using facial care products. Now, that being said, you know, there, there's a product for every need these days. They do sell scalp moisturizer. It's a pretty inexpensive product from The Ordinary. It's their natural moisturizing factor plus HA for scalp. Uh, Fragrance-free, it's lightweight, it's hydrating. Urea and lactic acid in this formula are hydrating and can soften and exfoliate dry skin. 
They're part of your skin's natural moisturizing factors, so they're helpful for moisture retention. This formula goes into the scalp very easily and doesn't really leave any kind of residue on the hair strands. Then there's the brand Scene. Um, Scene is a hair care brand. They have shampoo and conditioner that are fragrance free, really good. They also have a styling cream that's quite nice. They make a scalp serum, um, their Restore Scalp Serum. It has glycerin, which is very hydrating, bisabolol, which is anti-inflammatory, and squalane and emollient. This, like the Ordinary product, lightweight, hydrating, doesn't necessarily leave a greasy residue on the hair. All right, y'all, those are my tips on a dry scalp. Um, I hope this video was informative to you. Now, on the end slide, I'm going to link one of my videos all about why you have flakes, where I talk about tips for dandruff. So definitely check that one out next if you are dealing with dandruff. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.